Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, most school teachers have to get up around 7 in the morning. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, received a call last Thursday night from her principal, Osgood Conklin. And as usual, Mr. Conklin had an extremely cheerful bulletin for me. I was to be in his office for a meeting on the following day at 7.30. Friday morning, therefore, found me sitting down to breakfast with my landlady at 6.30 a.m. Oh, Connie. Yes, Mrs. Davis. Oh. Isn't it terribly early to be up and around? I wondered if you're as sleepy as I am. Connie, I said I wonder if you're as sleepy as I am. <laughs> Connie, Connie, wake up. What's the matter? Who came in? I didn't mean to upset you, dear. It's just that your head was slowly falling into your plate. Oh, that would have made a nice headline. Teacher found face down in bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> now, how did you know that was oatmeal? I wanted to surprise you. That's why I covered it with cream and sugar. Why I even sprayed a half bottle of sweet air on it so you couldn't tell by the smell. <laughs> yum, yum, just the way I like it. <laughs> What's this meeting in Mr. Conklin's office about, Connie? Well, as far as I could gather on the phone, Mr. Conklin found out that the mayor of our fair city is going to the opening of the Civic Symphony Orchestra season in the park today and will be driving past Madison with his entire entourage. But what has that got to do with you? Our beloved principal has decided that we ought to think up some stunt that might impress his honor. His suggestion was that students and faculty members all line up on the school steps. Well, that isn't a very original plan, is it? That's what I thought. I have a much more spectacular one. What's yours, Connie? Well, when the man should be found sitting on top of our 75-foot flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound spectacular. But where would all the teachers and students be? Where else? Shaking the pole. <laughs> Meeting is called to order. I will now call the roll of this committee. First, Miss Brooks. I said, Miss Brooks. Wake up, sleepyhead. <laughs> Miss Brooks! <laughs> I'm taking the roll. Well, go ahead. I've had breakfast. <laughs> Here, sir. Wide awake and raring to go. Yes, sir. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and mark you present, Miss Brooks. Next, the chairman of our entertainment committee, Mr. Philip Boynton. Oh, here, Mr. Conklin. Next, the editor of our school paper, invited to this meeting through the insistence of his class president, Harriet Conklin. Walter uh, Denton. President almighty ruler of Madison's destiny, should you decree that I am to contribute my meager wisdom to this august body, you have but to say the word, and I shall make available my every resource. Tap the wellsprings of hither... Old Briar! <laughs> now, to proceed with the business at hand. You didn't call my name, Daddy. I'm here. That goes without saying, my child. Now then. As you know, Mayor Duff and sundry other city officials will pass Madison High at approximately 2.30 this afternoon. Our problem is to show them that we at Madison are civic-minded and proud of their proximity. Any suggestions? I have one. Why don't we have the gym team line up on the campus, and as the mayor drives past, they could start a series of flip-flops. Uh, the gym team? No, no, it doesn't tweak me. Not arresting enough. <laughs> I could put on my bathing suit and do some handsprings with them. Please, Miss Brooks. I want something that will make his honor sit up and take notice. <laughs> you didn't 
wouldn't let me finish, Mr. Conklin. After my last handspring, I'd hurl myself under his car. <laughs> oh, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Anyone else have any lucid thoughts on the subject? Well, I have the tiniest glimmer of a germ of an idea, Mr. Conklin. Fine, Denton. Boil it down to a half hour and let's have it. <laughs> well, I don't think Mayor Duff will really appreciate anything we try to do if he's just driving by. What we should do is make him stop and get out of his car. And how do you propose to accomplish this feat? Easy! Roadblock! Then, when his car is stopped, we simply yank open his door and then one of us can reach in and grab him by... I have another idea that might be better. <laughs> You've had your quota, Denton. Sit down. I've got a super idea, Daddy. Why don't we all line up on the campus, and then when the mayor's car approaches, you and Miss Brooks can join hands and lead us in a monster square dance. And to think that for lo, these 16 years, I've showered naught but love upon you. <laughs> Down, girl. <laughs> As is my wont, I shall have to put forth the only feasible plan. I want the entire student body and faculty to assemble at 2.20 this afternoon under the flagpole. When the mayor's car draws nigh, our entire school band will step to the curb and strike up a stirring melody. Well, frankly, Mr. Conklin, I think Miss Brooks' idea to have a gymnastic exhibition is much more colorful than just having the band play. Oh, you do. <laughs> well, this meeting is still governed by democratic procedure, Denton. We'll simply put it to a vote. All in favor of Miss Brooks' idea, say aye. Aye! All opposed, say no. No. <laughs> All in favor of my idea, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. No! My idea is unanimously carried. <laughs> the closest election since Alf Landon. <laughs> Meetings adjourned. If you say so, Daddy. Good day, sir. Uh, bye, bye, Daddy. Yeah, bye. Oh, uh, before you go, Miss Brooks, I would like to remind you that Mayor Duff has quite a reputation as a music lover. And if our band is going to salute him, their musical instruments must be in perfect condition. Yes, sir. You will assign someone in your class to see that each instrument is cleaned and polished until it's gleaming. That's all, Miss Brooks. Dismiss. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, Walter. Oh, farewell, Mr. Conklin. And should you ever again be in need of an unbiased opinion from the editor of the Madison Monitor, please feel free to... Dismiss! <laughs> well, let's see now. Who can I get to polish these instruments? Any volunteers in my immediate vicinity? Well, I'd like to help you out, Miss Brooks, but frankly, I got a little history homework to do in my first class. History homework, but your first class is English. Yeah, I know, but when I sit behind Stretch Snodgrass with my English book propped up and the history notes underneath it, well, my English teacher would have to be a cockeyed wonder to be able to tell whether I was, hey, you're my English teacher. <laughs> yes, I am, more is the pity. But you've given me an idea, Walter. Stretch Snodgrass could probably do a very good job on those instruments. But isn't Stretch a little behind in his work? Oh, I don't know. Just a few terms, maybe. <laughs> he did a very good job of washing my windows last month. And even if he isn't a mental giant, at least he's industrious. And even if he isn't industrious, at least he's adjacent. That's Stretch taking a drink at the water fountain. Oh, good. I'll talk to him right now. You go on into class, Walter. You'll need a little time to set up your history notes. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll see you later. Well, good morning, Stretch. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Getting ready to smarten up all our little brains? Sort of, Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have a little holiday from studying if you'll do something else for me this morning. Well, sure, Miss Brooks. What is this other job and trail? It entails cleaning up all the musical instruments so the school band will make a nice, shiny appearance this afternoon. Mr. Conklin wants the job done in a hurry. Well, sure, Miss Brooks. I'd be happy to help out. I've been studying pretty hard lately anyway. My girlfriend, Susie Prentice, helped me with my homework last night. Boy, she's a whiz at English. Yes, I know. She's the first person named Prentice I ever met who spells her name with three S's. <laughs> yeah, Susie's different, all right. She sure learned me plenty about our mother's tongues. Well, that should come in very handy if you're going to open a delicatessen. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But, Stretch, if you'll take the instruments down to the basement for a good cleaning, I'll pick them up during lunch hour. Well, you better not wait till lunch hour, Miss Brooks. You see, between 12 and 1, I gotta take care of Mr. Fisher's pawn shop across the street so that he can go out and grab a bite. You better come down right after your first class. All right, Stretch. But what's this about the pawn shop? I thought you worked in your father's pet store. Oh, Dad and I had a little run-in. He said I wasn't worth the money he was giving me, and I said I was. What was he giving you? Eighty cents a week. <laughs> anyway, he said until I could prove I could earn some money someplace else, I was on prohibition. Prohibition? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, I better get those instruments now. You do that, and thank you, Andrew Volstead. <laughs> Well, here they are, Miss Brooks, all cleaned up. Oh, let's see. Stretch. These drum heads are all warped and split. And look at this slide trombone. Doesn't even slide. And these trumpets are all rusty. Rusty? Stretch, how did you clean these instruments? Well, the same way I cleaned the windows, Miss Brooks. Soap and water. <laughs> Soap and water? Sure. I just dumped all them instruments in this big tub and scrubbed like mad. Then I hung them over this electric heater till they was dry. Here, feel the saxophone, Miss Brooks. It's good and dry, ain't it? Dry, yes, but good it ain't. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember... No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, I didn't know quite how to break the news about the instruments to Mr. Conklin. For while he had been very fond of Shep Fields and his rippling rhythm, I wasn't quite sure how he'd react to Stretch Snodgrass and his soggy symphony. <laughs> When lunch period arrived, I determined to share my dilemma with Mr. Boynton for two very good reasons. One, if we could just put our heads together for a few minutes, I felt the problem would be solved. And two, if we could just put our heads together, I didn't care whether the problem was solved or not. <laughs> On my way to the biology lab, however, I was intercepted by Stretch's girlfriend, Susie Prentice. A cute little redhead with a baby face and a brain to match. Excuse me, Miss Brooks, but if it isn't too discommoding, could I commune with you for a jiffy? Well, I... How does that go again? <laughs> I'd like to commune with you. That's short for communicate. You know, have a little chat. Or as the French say, tote a tote. Tote a tote? <laughs> isn't that the way they say in France? Only in southern France. <laughs> tote a tote that barge, lift a lift that bale. <laughs> I need your advice about something. I'm in quite a predicament. It's about Stretch. Stretch? Yes, ma'am. When I first started to feel the way I felt about him when we first started dating, I thought it was just an inflatuation. An inflatuation? <laughs> yes, ma'am. But as the weeks went by, I was very surprised to see that he didn't begin to plawl on me. To plawl on you? Well, you see, I know that Stretch is a good athlete and all that, but it's mentally I'm worried about. Miss Brooks, what do you think of Stretch mentally? 
Mentally, I think stretch is a Lilliputian. Put another L in that word. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough L's in Lilliputian now. She did it. <laughs> forget the first time we met. Do you believe in love at first sound? At first sound? Don't you mean love at first sight, Susie? We were in a dark room. A bunch of us was... <laughs> and honestly, the first time I heard Stretch's voice, it gave me goose pimples. Susie, it gave me goose pimples. Gosh, when did you play post office with Stretch? <laughs> I was just correcting you, Susie, and I'll be more helpful another time, dear. Right now, I've got my own problem to solve. What's wrong, Miss Brooks? Well, I've got to get some new musical instruments by the time Mayor Duff drives by the school with his entourage. Is that what Mayor Duff is driving by the school with? At least. Well, you don't have to worry about musical instruments, Miss Brooks. Stretch is working in Fisher's Pawn Shop across the street during lunch. And I'm sure Mr. Fisher won't mind if we borrow a couple of the instruments he's got in there. Say, that's not a bad idea, Susie. Will you ask him about it? Well, sure. But why do we have to borrow the instruments? What become of the ones the school used to had? Used to had? Used to, we used to have some? Well, we used to, but we aren't have them now, hardly. <laughs> Now, you better hurry over and talk to Stretch about those instruments. I've got to see Mr. Boynton. All right, Miss Brooks. Toodle. Toodle. I'd like to join that girl. Seems like an awfully nice world she's living in. <laughs> uh, it's me, Mr. Boynton. Are you busy? Oh, not a bit, Miss Brooks. Come on in. Why, I hope the ceremonies go well today. I'm quite fond of Mayor Duff, you know. I voted for him in the last election against Adrian Himmelstoss. Me too. I didn't think Himmelstoss was anything. And Mr. Conklin's a great fan of the mayor's, too. <laughs> in fact, he told me a little while ago he'd give anything if he could be riding in the mayor's car as they drove past the school. I'd like to be in it, too. Then I wouldn't have to explain to Mr. Conklin about Stretch and the instruments. Well, what happened to the instruments? All I can tell you, Mr. Boynton, is that whatever you play on them, out comes I'm forever blowing bubbles. <laughs> With real bubbles. I, I don't understand. Stretch washed them all in soap and water. They're useless. His girlfriend, Susie Prentice, said she was going over to the pawn shop and borrow some others, but I don't trust Susie's memory, especially when Stretch is around. We'd better go over there and check on those instruments. Mr. Conklin wants the band to make a big impression on the mayor. Well, I can't quite follow this, Miss Brooks, but I'll be happy to help out in whatever way I can. Uh, first, though, I'd like to ask you something, Miss Brooks. Yes. I mean... <laughs> what is it? Do you think it'd be all right if I played with the band this afternoon? You? But, Mr. Boynton, we may not have enough instruments to go around as it is. Oh, I have my own instrument. It's right here in the desk. See? A ukulele. Well, Joe, college. <laughs> well, I, I used to play it quite a bit back in college. You did? There was one song I was particularly fond of. Oh, let's see. Uh, how did that go again? Oh, 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 I know. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. I wonder who it can... If you go for kissing, cutie, you could be my sweet patootie. <laughs> Somebody loves me I wish I knew Who it can be worries If I had a girl to squeeze I would burn my BVDs by, I shout, hey, maybe. Oh, come on, Miss Brooks, join in. Okay. 
You were meant to be my loving. We would make a lovely pair. I'm so round and you're so square. <laughs> wonder who maybe it's no more pencils no more books pretty soon no more miss brooks <laughs> what is the meaning of this scandalous conduct well mr conklin we were just silence trying... miss brooks <laughs> To you was entrusted the task of presenting our school orchestra at its best to impress upon the mayor the seriousness of purpose of Madison's musical aggregation. And what do I find? A jam session in the biology lab. <laughs> it's my fault, Mr. Conklin. I was You only just... should be ashamed of yourself, Boynton. A grown man fiddling with this, this cheese box. A ukulele is a musical instrument, sir. It's a cheese box. And what have you to say for yourself, Miss Brooks? Pass the crackers. <laughs> I, I mean, we were just leaving, Mr. Conklin mm. Perhaps you'd better uh, Yes, sir Goodbye, Mr. Conklin hmm. Musical instrument, indeed Boom, 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 R I said R A R A R A G G R A G G M O P P Rag Mop. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Oh, it's you, Susie. Hi, Stretch. Gee, you sound just like a regular salesman. Real sophisticated. <laughs> well, thanks, Susie. Of course, it's kind of tough to be sophisticated in this place, surrounded by nothing but secondhand junk. Oh, it ain't all junk. Those musical instruments in the window look brand new. Oh, and that reminds me, Stretch. I told Miss Brooks that we'd try to borrow them for the school orchestra this afternoon. Well, we couldn't use those instruments. They were hocked by Daffy Delaney. Daffy Delaney? The band leader. He had kind of a Spike Jones orchestra, only louder. That's why they went broke. The music was too noisy. Well, what's the way they played got to do with well, that? Don't you see? Those are all trick instruments. When you press certain keys on them, all kinds of screwy noises come out. Gosh, well, that wouldn't be any good for the mayor. He likes symphonic music. <laughs> what are the Brooks going to do now? Gee, I don't know. Wait a minute. Maybe we could borrow some instruments from Hurley's music store around the corner. It wouldn't hurt to ask. Come on. Mr. Fisher will be back from lunch any minute. It won't do no harm to let the store alone for a few seconds. We can go out the back way as quicker through the alley. Well, if you think it's all right to leave the store, Stretch. Oh, oh, Stretch. Stretch Snodgrass. That's funny. The place is empty. I wonder where Stretch is. He probably took some instruments down to the laundromat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait for him, Mr. Boynton. We'll just take whatever instruments we find in the window. I'll tell Mr. Fisher about it later. Oh, he's only got about five or six instruments here. Yes, but one of them's a tuba, and there's a trombone and a trumpet. You'd be surprised what a good brass section can do. Come on, Mr. Boynton. We're going to serenade the mayor like he's never been serenaded before. <laughs> Well, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, I see you've got the students all lined up. Yes, Mr. Conklin. According to the schedule, the mayor's car should be only three or four blocks away. Gad, how I wish I could be riding in it. Great man, Mayor Duffer. Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Conklin. Yes. I'm going to get the band together and lead them right up here to the curb. Get everyone quiet, Mr. Boynton. Uh, yes, sir. Now, 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 quiet down, boys and girls. Quiet. Gee, I've been looking all over for you, Miss Brooks. I tried to borrow some instruments from Hurley's music store, but he wouldn't give them to me without no deposit. Susie's still over there arguing with him. Well, she doesn't have to bother, Stretch. Mr. Boynton and I took all the instruments we need out of Mr. Fisher's window. What? But those are trick instruments. They were hocked by Daffy Delaney. Stretch, you mean those instruments can't be played? Well, they can be played all right, but I don't guarantee what'll come out, especially the tuba. When you press the middle valve down, a charge of explosive goes off inside the horn. Oh, no. 
<laughs> I've got to get to that band before Mr. Conklin... All right, Conklin... places, everybody. Uh, step back, trumpet. You, trombone, get a little closer. Uh, Mr. Conklin, I've got to talk to you right away, sir. It's about... What are you doing with that tuba? I'm going to play it, Miss Brooks. Oh, but, sir, you can't. Oh, I can't, can't no. I? <laughs> well, for your information, Miss Brooks, I have been playing the tuba since before you were... B- since you were in your early 20s. <laughs> Yes, I have. Well, play it in good health. <laughs> Here comes the mayor's car, Daddy. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you. Now, remember, orchestra, on the last four bars, you all drop out for my solo. Oh, uh, Your Honor, wait a moment, Your Honor. Oh, look. Look, the cars are slowing down. Ready, everyone? Remember now, play softly and with great dignity. A one, a two. <laughs> Yes, all right, Harry. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what happened? Your daddy got his wish, Harriet. He's now riding in the mayor's car. <laughs> Arden is our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight... Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, the explosion during Mr. Conklin's solo was nothing compared to the one after the mayor had passed by. The three of us, Mr. Conklin, myself, and the tuba, had just entered his office. I hold you completely responsible for this disgraceful exhibition, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Conklin, honestly, The culprit who set off that giant firecracker when I began to play the tuba must be apprehended and punished. But, sir, there was no culprit. You did it yourself. Oh, I did. And how, may I ask, did I accomplish this miracle? By pressing this little valve here? No, sir, not that one. Then was it this one here? No, sir, not that one. Oh, then it must have been this one. (laughs) Yes, sir, that's the one. (laughs) Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, Joe Quillen, and Lester White. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath-sized palm olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet-smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, Enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather. 
that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had, get big bath size palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.